Later in the playlist, I'm gonna have wall jumping, but first I need wall slide. I need to stick to a wall first. I've made my own animation in the downloads folder. It's a single frame animation. I'm gonna drag it in. Here's the animation. I'm gonna put it into my animations folder. Humanoid animations. First, let me delete the AIs for now. And I'm gonna go into the animator for the business mail. And inside the jump section, I'm gonna drag in the wall slide. Let me make it bigger so you can see it better. I'm gonna go from jump normal to wall slide, make the transition. Now I want the transitions to be based on certain conditions. I'm going to go into the jump folder because I want to check what kind of indexers that we have already there. So we're using one. I'm going to create another one. Transition indexer player jump indexer. I'll make it two. It's not a jump indexer, it's a wall slide indexer two. First, we want to be pressing forward. Wait, index is going to be two. And we're going to have multiple conditions. The first one being move forward. And we also want the player to be in the air, but we don't have that option. I'm going to go into the indexer code and create the option there. So here I'll call it air, meaning the player has to be in the air. And I'm gonna create the case for it. Air. And this is just going to be the opposite of the grounded condition. So I'm going to copy paste it. And it's just the opposite. Save. I can now add the air condition. We need one more. We want the player to be blocked by the wall that he's trying to be sliding on. Don't have that option. I'll call it blocked by wall. And again, we're going to create the condition. First, we want to check the blocking OBJ for the character control. And if this is null, we're looking at the failed conditions. So if it's null, it means the character is not blocked by the wall. And the other condition is that even if, I'll just say else, even if the blocking OBJ is not null, it could be a character. So we're going to use the character manager to get character using the blocking OBJ. And 
if this is not null. If this is not null. It's another failed condition because the character is blocking your player. And if both of these conditions are false, we're left with the wall blocking the player. So I'm going to go back and add the condition blocked by wall. I'm going to go to the jump. We need to add the condition, the indexer wall slide indexer and we're going to test it right let me put the character here and if I jump into the wall looks like we're not getting the condition if I look at the animator I think we forgot to add the transition conditions. Okay. Transition index needs to be two. And let's make sure that the index is two here and play again. And now as we hit the wall, we go into the sliding motion. And then from the wall slide, we now want to go back to the landing motion. So let me create a folder for the wall slide. And inside the wall slide folder, I'm going to create the ground detector, player ground detector wall slide. And for now, I'll just do 1% starting check time distance 0 0.1. Add the ability to the wall slide. And I'm going to add the transition from jump normal to wall slide to landing. And the condition is that grounded is true. Okay, I'm going to click play. So from the wall slide, when we hit the ground, we go into the landing motion. Okay, you have to be pressing forward. If you keep the momentum and let go of the key, you're not going to go into the slide. You have to press forward and then go into the slide. Let me also go to the other side. Okay, we haven't made a transition for the running jump. I'll do that later. For now, it's just a normal jump. So it should be the same for the both sides. And it's working fine. And I want to add one more ability here for the slide. I'm going to go into my state scripts folder. And I'll create a slow down ability. I'll call it slow, slow down fall. Press control T. Copy from any other ability. I just want the format. Rename it slow down fall. Slow down fall. Start with a clean script. And here I want the maximum fall speed. I'll use a vector. Vector 3 max 
file velocity. And at the end of the fall, should be back to zero. And as soon as we enter this state, we want to save this data into the animation data. Character control animation progress. This is where we're saving individual data. We don't have the maximum fall velocity yet for the animation progress. So control T, go into animation progress. I guess I'll put it under air control. Max fall velocity. And we simply save the data. We're not going to be saving any data in this scriptable object because it's shared by multiple players, multiple characters. So we got to save it into individual character control. Once we have the data here, I'll go under character control. Because I want to change the velocity in the fixed update. Where's fixed update? So inside the fixed update, slow down wall slide. If the max fall velocity y, if that is not a zero, we want to limit the speed. We get the y velocity of the rigid body. If that is smaller than the max fall velocity y, and we'll just say it equals max fall velocity. So I'll go back, make sure you save all the code, and I'm going to create the ability. Slow down fall, player slow down fall for the wall slide. And I'll try negative three. You don't want to put in any velocity for X or Z. And add the scriptable object to the wall slide and play again. So this is free fall speed. And if you stick to a wall, it's a slower fall. I think we're speeding up. I'm going to check the wall slide code. This is going back to zero. That's a mistake. So we're turning the scriptable object back to zero, the vector inside the scriptable object back to zero. We should be turning this, the saved data back to zero, not the original data. So if I go back, make sure that the number's there and play again. Okay, we now have a slow down fall for the slide. I think I want to make the transition a little quicker. I guess it doesn't make much of a difference. And some more fine tuning here. I'll try negative four. So 
it's slightly faster, 4.5, negative 4.5. I think that's a little more natural compared to the free fall. I don't want to slow it down too much. That was too little. Negative 4.2. I think that looks about right. I'm going to have to add some VFX later, some dust. For now, the transition looks good. And I'm going to go from the other side. Test it here as well. Okay. And all the other moves should be working the same. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to start transitioning from the wall slide into the wall jump. Thanks for watching.